7 assets that are more valuable than liabilities. Know the differences. Let's begin with the differences. In the case of personal finance, it is important to understand the relationship between assets and liabilities. Assets are the assets that grow in value over time, while liabilities are the debts we incur. The same goes for property, which grows in value. A mortgage loan is a long-term debt, while car leases are assets, with no real value. Comparing the assets and liabilities of every individual, is an essential part of financial management and planning. Companies have both assets and, liabilities. Assets are those that a company owns, such as property, while liabilities are obligations to other people, or businesses. Assets may be physical or intangible, available for immediate sale, or used for the day-to-day -day operations of a business. A company's equity is the number of assets, minus the sum of its liabilities. Liabilities are the money a company owes to outside parties. Monetary debts are grouped under accounts payable on a cash flow statement. Assets are a company's monetary value. In the same way, that a person or a company can own real estate, a company also has assets. These items can generate revenue, and provide long-term benefits to its owner. Comparing assets and liabilities, is a basic tool for investors to evaluate a company's worth. A standard balance sheet lists both, current and, long-term assets, as well as various types of liabilities. These are a few things you will learn as you move forward with this video. What are assets? What are liabilities? What's the difference between assets and liabilities? Is a house an asset? Are cars liabilities or assets? Should I buy or rent a car? Hello dear viewers. Hope you're having a great day. Welcome to TKI, the knowledgeinsights.com. Being part of your fine lifestyle. Before we start, click the subscribe button below, also the bell icon, as we have more insights to share with you for your fine living. Let's get started. Number 1. Real estate is very significant. The housing market has increased rapidly, and many analysts anticipate this trend will continue. In other words, it's time to assess your property investment portfolio for the next few years. Real estate investment may not be as profitable as you'd think. It's important not to get carried away by market speculation. Many people miss the opportunity to buy low and wait for better conditions. You can rent commercial property to businesses, manufacturing companies, and retailers. You can even lease space in some cities, in a warehouse or office building. Commercial property offers a great opportunity for income, as the rents pay themselves over time. However, there are many risks associated with investing in commercial properties. Moreover, commercial properties require a high learning curve. Therefore, knowing what you're getting into before investing your hard-earned money is important. Another great benefit of real estate is its low correlation to other investment forms. The value of well-chosen real estate appreciates more than annual inflation. Even if stocks are doing poorly, you can buy quality real estate at a discount, improve it to increase equity, and sell it later for a profit. Real estate is a stable asset class, despite occasional market corrections. Even though stocks can fall to zero, real estate will always have intrinsic value. Equity real estate is a safe bet, if you are looking for a high return. Number 2. Is information, a valuable asset? Knowledge, is an important asset for individuals. However, not everyone can use it, which is a problem in a society where knowledge is scarce and can be stolen easily. Moreover, knowledge is often not given to people in its entirety. If you want to learn more about the importance of knowledge, stay tuned. Here are some of the reasons why knowledge is an asset to individuals. Structured knowledge is easier to communicate. Those who have structured knowledge can communicate their expertise more effectively. Structured knowledge is based on a common language, rules of thumb, and conceptual frameworks. However, some knowledge is not structured and is best left unstructured. For instance, the strategy consulting firm's rainmaker may understand how to steer conversations and close deals, but he may have difficulty explaining his decision to colleagues. Intellectual property, IP, is another asset. Companies that develop a patented product can exploit the IP. Intellectual property is also an asset for those who do not own one. Many companies sell reprints of HBR articles to MBA and corporate learning programs. 
these collections were created by individuals who wanted to read them. When an organization invests in patented intellectual property, it will likely have a better chance of making money. If knowledge is not captured and stored effectively, it is useless for society. Knowledge management has quantifiable benefits. Easily accessible information improves employees' productivity and reduces the time it takes for employees to learn the information they need. Similarly, a more efficient workforce spends less time answering repetitive questions, which frees employees to perform meaningful work. Number 3. Stocks are useful as an asset. When buying stock, you're essentially purchasing a share of the company. As such, you're gaining equity in the company, which will increase its value over time. A company's common stock reflects this rising value, and a company may sometimes use debt to buy back shares. Another reason for buying stock is employee compensation. Companies may also use it in acquisition deals. Some companies issue preferred stock, which functions similarly to bonds. The risk-reward trade-off of owning stock is that it allows you to sell your shares at any time, which is very convenient for investors. While stocks tend to be less volatile than crypto, they are still volatile. Compared to bonds, stocks are generally more suitable for investors willing to leave their money alone. However, stocks are risky investments, as you stand to lose money if the company's shares decline. In this case, it might be better to stick to bonds. There are numerous reasons to buy stocks, rather than other types of assets. One reason may be tax considerations. A stock purchase usually results in a single taxation level, while an asset purchase can create a double tax burden. Asset purchases require corporate approvals, while stock purchases are more likely to require contractual consent. A company's size and industry are also important factors, as they affect your results from a stock sale. Number 4. Financial versus Real Assets Investing in real assets provides a hedge against macroeconomic factors, and can be a good alternative to stocks. Examples of real assets include company real estate, a fleet of vehicles, and office buildings. By contrast, brands and brand names are not real assets. Financial assets include stocks, bonds, and cash. Real assets are land, factories, buildings, and infrastructure. They typically offer higher returns, and can be used as a hedge against inflation. Unlike stocks and bonds, real assets can be stored at a third-party facility, and will incur a monthly fee and in insurance. There are many differences between real, and financial assets. While stocks and bonds are financial assets, a real asset has higher volatility and fluctuation. The value of real assets can increase with time, and ETFs are a popular way to track the value of real assets. A good way to compare real assets with stocks and bonds is by considering the cost of ownership. While financial assets are more liquid and can be traded for cash, real assets are often considered a better way to diversify an investment portfolio. As inflation continues to climb, real assets may be an attractive way to achieve a higher return. Moreover, they are more likely to appreciate over time. However, the risks and rewards of investing in these types of assets can be complex and unpredictable. But, if you have a long-term time horizon, and understand the risks and rewards associated with each, real assets could be a great way to achieve this goal. Number 5. Is car a valuable asset? Are cars liabilities, or assets? Stay tuned to know. A car is a tangible asset, and has some market value when sold. However, a car loan is a liability. You signed an agreement to pay your loan in full over a specified period. Therefore, you are responsible for making the payments. Whether you own a car or not, depends on your financial situation. You may not need a car for several years, but if you need one, it will likely not be very helpful. Car ownership involves several expenses, such as gas, insurance, and registration. In addition, most people consider car loans a normal part of adulthood. The money they owe is often more than the car's value, making it a liability if it isn't paid off within that time frame. However, many people view car loans as an integral part of adulthood, which is the most common misconception about car ownership. Ultimately, deciding whether to include a car in your personal finances depends on the owner's circumstances. Whether or not to include a car in your net worth depends on how you purchase the vehicle and how you plan to use it. While it is true that a car is a liability, it is important to note that it also is a useful asset. Even if you're buying it for your use, it's still worth including it in your financial plan. Number 6. The contrast between tangible and intangible assets. You might wonder, 
if there is a difference between tangible and intangible assets. Here are some of the basics. Let's have a look. Tangible assets have a physical existence and can be touched or seen. Examples of tangible assets include fixed and current assets such as stock, computers, buildings, and machines. On the other hand, intangible assets are not physical and can only be thought of or imagined. Tangible assets have a physical presence, unlike intangible assets. Intangible assets are only abstract and exist on paper but have a monetary value. Because intangible assets do not have a physical presence, their value cannot be easily calculated or fixed. Although their monetary value is intangible, they can still provide revenue to a company. A company can use them to measure a company's performance, as well as the success or failure, of a given project. Tangible assets include buildings, vehicles, machinery, plants, and patents. Intangible assets include trademarks, brand names, and goodwill. However, these types of assets are more difficult to value. They are harder to sell, liquidate, and evaluate. If you are interested in selling your business, selling some of your intangible assets may make sense. The sale of these intangible assets could help you avoid bankruptcy. While tangible assets are easy to value, intangible assets aren't as they don't have a physical existence. That makes them difficult to sell if you need cash. But, tangible assets can help you secure loans. Then, you can sell your tangible assets to secure your loan. You can also use them as collateral for a debt. But, intangible assets are more difficult to sell. Number 7. Is house a good investment? The answer to the question, is buying a house an asset or a liability, will vary, depending on your financial situation. While a house is an asset, and can be sold for a profit, it also has expenses associated with its maintenance, and mortgage. A house is considered a liability, when you cannot realize its appreciation, and have to pay for the mortgage, while an asset can be sold, and generate a profit. In addition to monthly costs, the property can also generate passive income for you. For owner-occupiers, this income is limited. The mortgage is a significant portion of the monthly cost, and requires a person to work full-time for many years. Robert Kiyosaki, believes that, a home is not an asset but a liability. Even if you can profit from reselling the property, the mortgage will take money from your pocket each month. In a nutshell, a home is an asset unless, the mortgage is a liability. As mentioned, a home requires cash to operate, but it's still an asset because, it can be sold for a profit. However, a mortgage is a liability since, one must repay it over time. Even if your home is paid off, it can increase in value as the market grows. Mortgage interest payments, do not offset the monthly costs of a mortgage, so it's not a good idea to bank on the appreciation. While paying down your mortgage principal, is a good way to save money, it is also a risky strategy that will eventually cost you a lot of money, in the long run. In addition to the monthly costs, mortgage interest is not a tax break, which was painfully learned for many homeowners, during the Great Recession. Unlike liabilities, assets are not easily converted into cash. Rather, you can think of your household finances, as a business. Assets make you money, while liabilities are money you owe. Hence, it is important to build assets, and avoid liabilities. You see, the main goal of every business is to build assets, rather than liabilities. As a rule of thumb, building assets is better than reducing expenses. This is because, assets provide future benefits, while liabilities are a debt to pay. If a company is facing huge debt, its assets are not enough to cover the debt. Thus, it would be in trouble. However, liabilities are not completely useless, they are helpful for financing growth. A small business can expand by, taking a line of credit. It is important to monitor the growth of the liabilities, and assets. Dear viewers, we believe that seeing this video would have piqued your interest and sparked your curiosity. We'd appreciate it if you could leave us a remark in the comment section below. As always, we appreciate hearing from you.